All right, so the next section that we're going to look at is subtracting integers. Yesterday we looked at adding integers, and we had two basic rules. Our two rules were if the signs were the same compared to if the signs were different. If the signs were the same, we added and used the sign that was in the problem. If there were, were the signs were different, we actually subtracted and then used the sign from the bigger number, right? That means that even though we know that it's a negative number, it's bigger if we take the absolute value of it. So we use that sign. Today we're going to do subtracting integers and basically we're going to try to turn every single problem into an addition problem like we did yesterday. All right, so subtracting integers, we're going to try to do a problem by turning it into an addition problem, as I just said. So subtracting integers, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I know uh, Mrs. Christoffel will tell you to do this one way and the way that she's teaching it to her kids, um, I really like. So we're gonna talk about that one first. And then I'll also mention one that I've been doing with uh, my kids previously, or that's how I learned it way back when I was in high school. Um, so it's a, a process that if you like either one, I don't really care how you think about it, how your melon kind of thinks about it. You just have to be able to execute. So the first one is keep, change, change. So this is telling you what to do with all of the things in the problem, meaning the numbers, the operations or operators, and so on and so forth. So you're looking for things that you can have in the problem. So again, every single problem here, the first thing that you need to be able to do is identify it as a subtraction problem. So obviously, if we go back to the original problems that you did way back when you were a little kid in first grade, this, uh, you really don't need to use any rule. Hopefully you can just see that it's a subtraction sign again and that this subtraction sign is a subtraction sign. Now again, just like yesterday, this is where I want you to start realizing that, yes, this right here is an operator like we said yesterday, so it does show subtraction. But at the same time, I also want you to start realizing that this is the sign of the number. So if it's the sign that's directly in front of the number, it actually acts as the sign of the number and not just the operator. So in our case, we would probably just go ahead and do this problem as eight minus seven and we get our answer, all right? So that's just a regular subtraction problem. If we go forward now and include integers now, we could have eight minus, and then we'd have a negative number afterwards, so negative nine. This is where we're going to apply the keep change change method. So again, if you notice, there's three words, there's three parts of the problem. The first integer, the operator, which is our minus sign, and then the last integer. So that's what we're concentrating on right now. We're going to keep, you're always going to have this particular number, whatever it happens to be, it's always going to stay the same. So you're going to bring it straight down. You're going to keep it, whatever it is, positive or negative. The next thing you're going to do is change. You're going to change every single subtraction sign into an addition sign. So you're changing the problem from subtraction to addition. So again, we're going to change that one. So keep, change, and then change, we're going to look at the second integer and the whole thing now, don't forget that sign, and we're going to change that whole number. So it is negative, it's going to change into a positive, all right? The other way that you can kind of think of this particular problem right here, any time from going forward, if you have back-to-back -back negatives, so a minus sign and a negative sign, you can turn them into one giant plus sign. But if we keep on with Mr. Stoffel's way, we're going to keep, we're going to change, we're going to change, and now 
Just like yesterday, we have an addition problem, so we're gonna do what we did yesterday. The signs are the same. So when the signs are the same, we add, and we use the sign that's in the problem, so we get a plus sign, or a positive number. All right, so keep, change, change just tells you, in the order of the problem given, what you're going to do with each part of that problem. The first part is that first integer. It could be positive or negative. It comes straight down. The second is the operator, which is your minus sign. And you're going to change that into addition. And then the last one is your actual second integer. So if we look at a couple more of these, remember now, it doesn't matter. We're just looking at negatives and positives. So basically, now, the other thing that you're going to think about or get used to in this second problem right here, if I looked at this problem right here or if uh, another math teacher looked at it or even some older kids, meaning juniors and seniors, would look at this problem, they're probably not going to think about doing keep change change anymore because they are used to it. But this is just a method to get you to realize what you're actually doing in the problem and so you can manipulate things in the right way to get them in a version of what your mind can actually see that you're doing right now. So again, if we keep the method, we're gonna keep. So the first number in our case, which is negative 10, comes straight down and we continue to use negative 10. Now we're going to change. So we take this symbol, which is a minus sign, and we change it to addition. And then we're going to change the second number. So again, this is where, if you're looking at this, I now have a negative eight. But if you look at the original problem here and talk about the operator being not only an operator, but a sign, notice in the original problem, we could say this is negative 10 minus eight, but we could also say that this was a negative eight. So if you notice in my last, when we did our switch, our last problem here, then we do have negative 10 plus negative 8. We just don't show that plus sign in the original problem. But again, I'm going to realize as my experience increases that this problem and this problem are the exact same thing. And when I see a negative sign in between, meaning the minus sign, I'm actually going to treat it as plus a negative, and I'm going to do this right away. It's all about experience, though, and practice. So I would definitely go through the process of keep change change at the beginning, and then you're going to get our answer. Now we go right back to what we did yesterday. We got addition problems. The signs are the same. If the signs are the same, we add the numbers, and then we use the sign from the bigger number. So we get negative 18. So this is where it gets a little confusing because we say that this section is all about subtracting integers, but in the first two problems, we've actually added. And just like yesterday when we did some of the problems, even after we did the problem, we actually ended up subtracting even though the section was about adding integers. So that's where it gets a little um, confusing sometimes and you just gotta go real slow and make sure that you pay attention to your signs. So if we show you a problem now that would actually involve subtraction, we get negative 10 minus and then negative seven. Again, sometimes they're gonna put parentheses around that second number Sometimes they won't, so don't get baffled with that. But again, if we continue to do this, I'm going to show you kind of two different ways to do this problem because, again, this is all comes from experience and everything, but I, as an experienced person in this, might do this a little different way than if you're just starting out. So again, if we continue with our method, we're going to keep our first term. So again, the negative 10 comes straight down. The sign doesn't change, nothing changes. We're going to change subtraction into addition. Again, we want all of our problems to be addition problems. And then we're going to change the sign of the second number. So we're going to change. We're going to change negative 7 into positive 7. All right? Now, we go back to our rules from yesterday. And the rules say, if my signs are different... What do we actually do? We actually take the numbers and subtract them. So what's 10 minus 7? We get 3. And then I'm going to use the sign from the bigger number. So again, we, as we look at this, we might just look at it and say, well, 10 is bigger than 7. But if we realistically think about what we said there, negative 10 is not bigger than 7.
But if we take the absolute value of it, then it is. So negative 10 is actually bigger than 7 by absolute value terms. So we're going to use the negative from that answer. Now again, a little shorter version of this maybe is if I would do this same problem myself or another um, math teacher, Mrs. Harper, I might look at this also, and she's going to say negative 10. And then if we rewrite the original problem, so all I'm doing is the, the same problem, we're just showing you a different way. So again, one of the other kind of keys to this, or one of the little cheat methods, is any time that I have back-to-back -back negatives in a problem from here on out, I'm going to turn those two negatives into one giant plus sign. So if I have one giant plus sign, then I'm, I already did this process. So now I'm ready to go because we turned it into a plus sign. But notice right here, these two equations essentially are the exact same thing. We just didn't actually go through the process of keep change change. All right, so again, negative 10 plus seven, now we're right back and we get our answer of negative three. So it's just another little difference to solving the problem. Again, if your brain sees it this way and can do it that way, that's fine. Otherwise, continue to do keep change change until it clicks, so you get the method, all right? So, if you have any questions here, then um, ask the teacher. Otherwise, the other version of this, and like I said, this is what I would have learned way back when, when I was in school. It's exactly the same thing, it's just different terminology. So the second way is I'm going to say that you're going to add the opposite. So again, this is just different terminology. In a sense, we're doing the exact same thing that Mrs. Christoph is doing with keep change change. With add the opposite, basically, I'm taking into account that I'm never going to do anything to the very first term in the problem. I'm always going to leave it alone. So anytime that I have a, a number here, uh, negative 13 minus 9, okay? When I add the opposite now, I'm always going to keep my first thing, which is my first term, my first number, whether it's positive or negative. I bring it straight down every single time. I just don't actually say that out loud. That's where this first way is maybe just a little better just because you're telling yourself, keep that, keep that. We don't say that. We don't say keep and then add the opposite. I just say add the opposite. So here now, I'm always going to keep that first number and then I'm going to do what it says, add the opposite. I'm going to add, I'm going to turn my minus sign into a plus sign and then I'm going to do the opposite, add the opposite. The opposite is the opposite of that second number. So we have a positive nine here. That's where, again, you have to look at this as an operator now instead of a sign, but I'm going to turn this into positive or sorry, turn this into negative nine. Now again, if you like the other version where this is just a subtraction sign and you've grown up enough in one day that you can see it that way, that's totally fine. But if you don't, then you're gonna use one of these methods. Now again, we're right back to what we did even if we would have done keep, change, change, right? Keep, change, we changed it from a negative to a positive and we changed that one from a positive to a negative. Now we're back to an addition problem but our signs are the same, so we're gonna add the numbers. What's 13 plus nine? We get 22, and now, because the signs were the same, we're gonna use that sign in our answer. So again, I'm not telling you which way is better or which way is gonna work for you. You gotta kinda of look at both methods and decide. Does it make more sense to me when they say keep change change, or does it make more sense to me when they say add the opposites? It's the exact same thing. You're going to get the exact same answers, All right? Um, other things that they introduce in this section. So we're still talking about subtraction. So the other thing they mention in this is they talk about the range. Have you ever heard of the range? There's probably different versions of this word range. And in this section, when they're talking about range, they're talking about in a set of numbers, okay? And again, remember, in a set of numbers, a lot of times they're gonna put that set inside those funky little braces or, or parentheses. 
So they're going to give you a bunch of numbers in there, or they're going to give you a chart, or they're going to give you a graph. The range means I'm going to take the difference. And again, what's that mean? That means that's the answer to subtraction. So I'm going to subtract the biggest term of the biggest number and the smallest number. I'm going to take those two and I'm going to subtract them. And the answer is my range. So going forward, if you ever hear the range in um, our Iowa assessments or other uh, tests, maybe some review problems, that's what the range means. Okay. Um, other things that we could do is go back and we could do some of our expressions. So if they give us problems that involve variables, m minus negative 2. Okay, so again, this is an expression because we don't have an equal sign. Can I solve this problem right now? No, because I don't know what m is. So the only way that I can do this is if they tell me that m is equal to 4, then I'm going to take that information and I'm going to stick it or substitute it in for that m. So when I substitute it in, I rewrite the problem as 4 minus negative 2. So again, now you got a couple decisions to make. Do I want to go through the process? Okay, do I want to use a little cheat method? That's totally up to you. So I'm going to show you this in both versions. If I use the uh, method that we introduced today, we're going to keep. So it's going to bring down our four. We're going to change. We're going to take the minus sign into a plus. We're going to change. We're going to take the second number and change its sign. Okay. The other version that we would do is add the opposite. So again, remember, if I add the opposite, I bring it straight down. Add, I turn it into an addition problem, and I do the opposite number. So I added the opposite. Again, it's all about the terminology that, that your melon thinks about. The other version of this totally would be remembering that if I ever have back-to-back -back negatives, I can turn them into one giant plus sign. And then, but if you notice, both of those are the exact same uh, problem now. We get 4 plus 2 and 4 plus 2, and so in either case, we're going to end up with 6. All right? If you got any questions, make sure you come in and ask the questions. The problems will be on Infinite Campus for you to look at.